Well, good morning. This is Leo Kane with Barrel Engineering and Inspection. I have an exciting hour to present today. Go, this, go click, go live. Go <laughs> click, the computer wants me to just run off the microphone because well, I stole your intro. Welcome back. This is our number two of Tampa Home Talk. <laughs> Leo thought I was not going to be able to make it back, and Adam already scooted out. Thank you. We are now live on Facebook. Sorry we missed last hour with Mr. Fasano. Uh, gracious enough to, like, totally answer questions about Hillsborough. He just took he, a call. He really took he a call. Just took a Hillsborough yeah. call. Anyway, super cool guy. We love having him on. They actually moved a meeting for us. I can't believe it, but they're so great. Well, we they moved a meeting for him. What? Not us. We're not at the meeting. No, no, no. They had a meeting with their staff, and they moved it for us. They moved it back to be on Tampa. Well, to educate the public. I mean, it's yeah. part of their responsibility as public servants. Okay, so we have hour number two lined up for you today, and another amazing show, of course, and I'm really excited to talk about this topic. I don't know that we've actually ever covered it here on Tampa Home Talk, um, but we have, I want to make sure I get this right, so it's Tom and Buck, right? Yes, yes. yes. And what, tell me the name of your company. Swept Away Incorporated. Okay, so Swept Away Incorporated, and you guys are actually uh, chimney sweeps, right? That's what you do? Yes, yes ma'am. Gilded. So uh, tell me a little bit about you guys. Like, you come all dressed up. You guys look awesome with your hats. Like, what's the whole story with that? Well, uh, traditional German chimney sweep outfit. Uh, we've technically wear top hats and tails or the German uniform. The when, 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 when weather permitted, because yeah. it's really hot right it's now. It's <laughs> not, <laughs> not when it's hot, no. But <laughs> the chimney sweeps originally got the hand-me-downs from the upper class, the swells in Victorian England. So we'd get the top hats and we'd get the tails, the hand-me-downs. So we'd wear the hand-me-down clothes while we continued to wear them through the years. A lot of people weren't aware that the tail coat was made so when you'd sit on your horse, the tail would split and drape over the side. Well, the benefit of that was when the chimney sweeps had worn out pants, the tails would sh sweep shut and you would not see the holes in our britches. Oh, wow. That's what a cool story. <laughs> <laughs> so when you guys go to clean or sweep a chimney, are you all, do you always wear your same getup? Normally, we're in our top hat. We usually have our work shirts on. Uh, if we're going to go kiss a bride at a wedding like Buck is doing Saturday, yep. he'll come in traditional wear. Wait, say that one more time. <laughs> You're going to wear it. Explain that. Okay. And, um, He's going to sweep the wedding. Yeah, uh, it, it's considered good luck to have a chimney sweep come to the wedding and kiss the bride. It's oh, tradition. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. And I never heard that. Yes. Uh, the, the, last, the last royal wedding that was, you know, world broadcast and whatnot, there was a chimney sweep there. Of course, you didn't see him on TV. His name was Philip. He's from England yep. and so forth. And that's been tradition from time immemorial. It's considered good luck to have a chimney sweep at your wedding. So you get to go kiss all kinds of brides. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do indeed. <laughs> we get invited to weddings all the time. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Did you, you knew that, I'm sure. I did, and I want to learn more about the guild during this hour. Okay, okay. okay. Sure. You jump in, guys. Uh, I know you're excited. Because, so, uh, is guild like the predecessor of a union? Okay, here, here's the thing. The, the, the chimney sweep guild, we have been around, the chimney sweeps have been around since the early 1400s, 1600s. A lot of people aren't aware that Andreas Dumas is a plagiarist. Our, uh, our guild hall in Germany has Einer für all, Al für einen, engraved in stone, which in German means one for all, all for one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we are actually a guild. We all know each other. The chimney sweeps get together in Santa Maria, Italy. We have the March of the Sweeps. Thousands of sweeps come from all over the world. We have the, or in, this year in Orlando, in February, we have the National Chimney Sweeps Convention coming. We have people coming from Sweden. We have people coming from Denmark. We have people coming from Germany. We have people coming from all over the United States. We all know each other. We've put on conventions for years. I was a convention trainer for 20-something years with one convention circuit. So we're literally a guild. We know, uh, prime example, I was at a house yesterday. The customer says to me, oh, I have a house in North Carolina. Uh, Chim Chimari is my customer. Well, that's David and Beth Klein and Bill Klein. I've known them for years. So I immediately talked about David and Beth. And so we really do. We know a lot of each other from all over the country. Um, so it cool. is a deal. So I had no idea you guys were so, so you guys would have 
Uh, you have one in Germany. Where else do you have actually official like guild halls? Like all, all over the world. world. Old Poland, oh. Sweden. Yeah. Because yeah. um, I'd like going to these old town squares in Europe, and you have the guild mm. hall section. You got the fishmongers, the gil- the, the chimney sweeps. Right. You got the, the the sewing people and stuff. It's just <laughs> kind of right. it's kind of neat to see the guild halls because you get like you said the sayings on the wall with yep. the plaques and everything. Yep. Well, now I will I will say that um, in Germany, <laughs> uh, the other day I was we were where was that was that Norfolk Virginia convention I mm-hmm. think was the last one we were in Norfolk Virginia, and I was talking to one of the German sweeps, and our shirts our our, our work shirts on the back of them have the actual logo guild logo, mm-hmm. so I said to Bernard I said so you know what about Anna for Al Al for because I'm talking between Bernard and Andreas Bernard is West German Andreas is East German, mm-hmm. uh, the comment was oh. He's West German. We don't do that. <laughs> so it really depends on where you are. But literally, we're all friends. We all know each other. Uh, it is a very small community. If the guy is professional and he goes through the training, to give you an idea, for us to keep our certification, we literally have to go and recertify every two years. We have to keep certification points. We have to go to conventions. The conventions that we do actually have training. So we go for three to four days training at wow. least once to twice a year so in what love, we do. I would love to break down some of that as we sure. as we dive in at sure. Tampa Home Talk on some of the things you because you would think a chimney sweep, what do you learn that's new? Like what's your CE, what's your continuing Prime example, on that? How many people know the physics of a home, how a home breathes? Oh he does. I'm sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> now see that's the thing. Leo, Most people Leo that, can probably answer more than you because he's, <laughs> he's like a like how, how many? You're I want to know about the technology. I want to know about the technology changes over. I got so okay. many questions. Sure. The yeah, technology yeah. changes yeah. over yeah. the years. You, yeah. yeah. okay. okay. you got to read me in here. Okay. All right. Uh, originally, the chimney sweeps started out with the climbing boys. Okay. And if you know what a climbing boy is, they were the orphans off the streets. Okay. And you know, every once in a while, you had a slow kid that wasn't working. How did they get them motivated? Well, <laughs> not that not that it's right or, or good or anything, but the master sweep, if they weren't going fast enough, would light a small fire in the firebox to make them move faster. Have you ever heard the expression, light a fire under your butt? Yeah. yeah. That's where the expression comes from. Oh, oh most yeah. expressions come after horses. That one didn't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, now, the, uh, the other thing that we've got there is you've heard the... Uh, terminology your goose is cooked mm-hmm. okay well when they used to clean the chimneys what they would do was an easy way of doing it around the holiday time the maid would go down to the market and she'd buy a goose and then she'd bring it home the chimney sweeps would be coming along the top of the roofs and yell down the chimney chimney sweep you know and she'd so take the goose into the through he'd drop a rope down he'd tie the rope around the foot of the goose she'd take him hold a sheet up over the front of the fireplace he'd give a jerk and start hauling it up and then, you know, the goose would be flapping its wings and it would sweep the floor and so forth. I'm sure in this day and age, some people would have a that's issue with that, but that's, uh, you ask about the old technology, so no, that's kind of how it originated. The old saying was, the blacker the bird, the cleaner the floor. I've heard that one. So what would happen is the chimney sweep would then come down off the roof to the front of the house. And I'm, he would ama- I'm like just in awe this hour. I'm like, I feel like I'm watching a He would walk up to the door. By the time he got down off the roof, she would have gone and laid a fire in the fireplace, swung the kettle hook out over and had a pot of water boiling. So then he'd come in and snap the goose's neck, handle the goose. She I think not going to listening to this right now. They're going to have she, She'd put them in the water, boil it, pull the feathers off. They'd take and they'd put the goose in the f- fireplace and they holiday goose was cooked. So then you've got the goose is cooked and the black of the bird, all in one saying, all off of one little thing that's happening there. Wow. So now, we've gone from, (laughs) to give you an example, in Florida, just let's just talk about our general area. In Florida, in 1920, the homes did not have terracotta liners. We can look at a house because of our training, we'll know what era that house was built in by how it's constructed. Like, people do not realize how much training goes into what we do. If we come into a house that was built before 1925, there's going to be no terracotta liners in that house. It's very unusual to find a house built before 1925 that has a liner. Back up, uh, I know what a terracotta liner is. Okay. But what is a terracotta liner? Exactly. A terracotta liner. Yeah, I, I was waiting for you to <laughs> a, terraco- a terracotta liner 
was basically in 1925 they designed a, f a vitreous flue clay liner that was made and cooked in a factory and made to contain the combustion byproducts because when you burn wood so much of that wood is not combusted and as it goes through the flue it cools and solidifies so the residence time how long that gas is in the flue tells how long it it's going to build up and how much it's going to build up. So what they did was they put a vitreous clay liner in which gave you a barrier for fire safety. So it literally, because what they did before that was in the early 18, 16, 1700s, hey, they, Hold after, the break, after 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 the break, sorry, okay, after the break. Okay, number, chimney break. questions, call or text 813-377-2775. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back. This is Tampa Home Talk, and we are joined today by Tom and Buck with Swept Away Chimney Service Repair awesome. and Cleaning. And uh, you guys brought us some cool little Monopoly pieces. <laughs> well, that's like. that's your very own chimney sweep for your mantle because chimneys are, are really known as being generally lucky. So if you have one of those on your mantle, I've been there. Okay. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have to come to my house to put it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that's our own little elf on a shelf. Oh, oh, oh yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Our own little elf on a shelf. I love it. So, um, I. I would love to talk a little bit throughout the hour, throughout this, you know, next, well, what's left of the hour, sure. um, of the decades and the times and some different things you should know about different chimneys built in different times. Mm -hmm. yep. um, and I guess, real quick, before we dive into that, I'll ask you about my own chimney, right? Okay. okay. So my house was built in the 90s. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're actually in the process of trying to redo our fireplace still. We're going to go to like oh, the electric that. gas, <laughs> like, you know, with the rocks. Okay. Um, anyway, so I had a chimney suite out of my house, and he said, you don't have a real chimney. <laughs> it's a faux chimney. Uh -huh. And I said, what? There's a stack, like, on the roof. Mm -hmm. and, and there's a vent. It, like, why do I not have a real chimney? He said, you don't have a real chimney. It's... it's <gasps> Well, what he might have been referring to, there are t a couple of different types of fireplace systems. There's a, what, a brick masonry chimney, but there's also what's called a prefabricated fireplace system, which is actually a steel box that's connected to a round flue that goes all the way up and through your house. It is a functional you know, fireplace and it's chimney. It's weird. But, like, uh, there's not a flute in there. I don't know. Maybe you guys should follow me home after the show. <laughs> I don't know what to do about it. It's, it's a little uh, different. Mm -hmm. So this is some of the things that's really timely for you guys to chime in on, right? Sure. Like with regard to these fireplaces, it, whether it's it's wood burning mm -hmm. or it's gas, there's fumes and a lot of toxins that can get into your home and actually kill you. So we, we do want to touch on that. Okay. And what happens like if you buy a home and who knows when the last time it was cleaned, mm -hmm. we need to chat okay. about those things as well. So you guys dive into wherever you All want. Right. But if they well, followed you home, would that be considered lucky? Okay. On the uh, chimney, okay. What we usually tell people is you want to have your fireplace inspected every couple, three years minimum. And the reason why you want to have it inspected is if you're not using it, you don't know what's moved into it. Uh, one of the biggest things that we find here in Florida, we have a lot of newer construction with prefabricated metal type fireplaces. The big issue that we have with those is water damage. Most people don't realize that they'll damage. actually rot out and water damage. We, we see damages on those a lot of times. And isn't it pertaining to the flashing, Leo? Yeah, like too. There's a lot of flashing issues around chimneys. Yeah, there's a lot of times, and I get on roofers about this constantly. When the roofers are re roofing, they won't put a saddle or a cricket in around the base of the they chimney. They don't know about and crickets. And they're told, like, well, it's not part of the roof. I'm like, no, nah, it's it part of the roof. So, back but, up, what is that? What does it look okay. like, and how would someone know if they Well, have uh, a cricket, and, and that, that's a, a great point. If the chimney is wider than, I believe it's 26 inches, it's supposed to have a cricket. Uh, a cricket is basically a raised area where the chimney meets the roof to shield water away from the base of the chimney so you don't have a place where the water collects and dams up, and, and dams up on, the, on the roof, you know. And, it's and like a little pyramid. Yeah, yeah, right. like a, yeah, that's a good good way to look at it. It's a little hip roof in front of your chimney. <laughs> right, right. So well, the, we see the flashing just get missed a lot, right? Well, yeah, they, they won't they won't touch they won't touch the flashing, and I'm like I've I've nailed roofers on this all the time. They want me to close out their permits, and I'm like, well, the chimney's not properly flashed. They're like, well, we don't we didn't we didn't add flashing. It was just there. I'm like, it wasn't. Most of them don't know how to step flash a chimney properly. You right. need to, otherwise exactly. the roof just starts leaking. Because other times I'm like, <laughs> I, we come out two two weeks, three weeks after new roofs on, and it's leaking at the chimney still. We're called in to repair them 
all the time. All the time. And they said, well, we just had the roof done, and we find that the metal flashing was not replaced mm -hmm. because the guy did not know how to step it and properly tuck it back into the chimney or how to counter flash it. So right. you're saying if I'm getting my roof redone, it's a good opportunity to call you guys out and look at it to make sure it's done properly? That's actually the best time to look yeah. at it because we can see w uh, wood damage or see if there's signs of dry rot. Uh, That's the one thing that a lot of people would not think about. Honestly, mm -hmm. if they're replacing their roof yeah. and they have a chimney, they probably wouldn't think hey I probably should have to give you an example. that's the first area I look yeah. when we go in your brain is wired differently than most everyone listening so when we go in and we do an inspection on a chimney one of the things that we're doing is when we're on the roof we're actually walking on the roof we feel soft spots we know where it's spongy we can look and we can see where that valley is full of leaves and the leaves are sitting there rotting eating out the metal valley uh, flash between the two roofs where they pitch together this is also a fire hazard area where if a spark comes out lands in that dry debris oh, yeah. it will cause a fire so when we're up there if we see something like valleys that are full of leaves if we see soft wood we see deteriorating shingles the sweep is going to mention that to you because it all revolves around safety in Europe they're required to have access to every chimney they have to have a ladder for us to climb to we don't have that in this country no. what we have in this country is a large liability okay? <laughs> seriously that's why we actually our company owns a brand new 2019 65 foot bucket lift spider track to go in it'll go through 36 inch gates i took it inside of a church and we did a charity job a couple of weeks ago putting a sign up over a, a baptismal floor for the church um, but in europe the roofs are a lot steeper oh yes <laughs> they, they are, are indeed they are most definitely but then again in europe they don't tear the things down every 20 years you've got buildings that are solid yeah, yeah. you yeah. can tell yeah. the size and of the people buildings. yes right so how did the chimneys change here in the united states over the last several years we were talking about okay. the terracotta chimneys they, but then at what decade what era okay. did the stuff start changing and how does that impact the person listening to so talk about the year and what they should be looking at for their fire Place. If you have a home that was built in the 20s, you want to have it inspected to make sure that there is some sort of a liner system so that you have safety. Because you, it's a not a. It, in, in our world, it is not suitable for use if it doesn't have it. Okay. Right. And and FP211 FP says better. absolutely not. So right. keep in mind, just because your home is a certain way doesn't mean you shouldn't have it checked or reinspected or modified. Because as building codes change, they do that for a reason. Right. Because they found well, there was cause. no building code back then. There was a Sears right. catalog. <laughs> I've seen them. Yep, even yep, a uh -huh. house built at yep. wherever, I mean, compared to one built right now, they're up to current standards for reasons because they found design flaws or, or mm -hmm. safety yes. issues. But, but I so, would argue that these homes with the terracotta liner that are 100 years old, I think that system's going to be better than your wood box stucco. Oh, most definitely. Yeah. Th those have lasted 100 years mm -hmm. where the prefabricated fireplaces have got a 15 to 20 year manufacturer's recommended life. Yeah. They're designed to be sacrificial. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, in the 1920s, we had no liners. 1925, we went to liners. Now, these houses that we had in this area were designed to breathe. That's how they withstood the storms, okay? Now we come into the 50s, and we start getting into air conditioning and central heat, and now we're getting into dampers. Before that, the damper was used to control the, how you burnt the fire, the rate of flow of the gases moving through the floor and how much heat came back out. Now, suddenly, it became important to have a damper that sealed it so you're not losing heat you're not losing air conditioning so we see that coming in right around the 50s and the 60s okay so then right around that time we also figured out well hey that terracotta liner is only coming up to the penetration of the roof it's not carrying all the way out the top of the chimney and what was happening was in the 50s we went to fuel oil fuel oil most people don't realize this if you had a fuel oil heater in your house fuel oil when the moisture or the the soot gets wet it turns to sulfuric acid Oh. And it starts yeah. eating the mortar from the inside out. So when we go into a home that's got a fuel oil heater or we see an old fuel oil heater line, we have to wear respirators. We have to, we're, we're literally getting into a moon suit because you will hurt yourself breathing this. So you just throw the goose in there, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's kind of hard to come across a goose right now, you know. So. Yeah, no, besides that, Peter would have us. <laughs> right, yeah, I don't think they would like that. But. It's historically <laughs> accurate. Yeah. Now, now, getting into that, the uh, you know who the Quakers are. Mm -hmm. Okay, chimney sweep history. The, the, the industry originally we used climbing boys. 
okay, and we used the orphans off the streets. And then child labor laws came in. Thank goodness. And, okay, then what happened was we went to these new fancy, not newfangled cane rods with screw on brushes. Well, the American chimney sweeps were not up to the European standards of child labor laws at that time. So the Quakers, being the Quakers, they put together a full clipper ship full of chimney sweep rods and brushes, brought them over to our country and went to the American Chimney Sweeps Guild and said, we're going to give you these tools to no longer use the children. So that's how we originally got transposed over to brushes and you rods from having the kids climb in. Well, that's the actual rods and brushes we're using, but your equipment on your fireplace should be your poker, your shovel, your tongs. You should always have a metal bucket to keep the ashes in because you don't know how many times somebody will have a fire going. They'll scrape the ashes out, throw them in a the garbage can, take them out and throw them in the garbage can out there. There's live coals and they have a fire alongside the house that catches the house on fire and the whole house goes down because they empty the ashes. So it's November 1st. We haven't quite hit the cold season yet. But we did a week in February and one week in December. <laughs> I think we're right. going to get yeah. a little snap here somewhere and someone wants to use the fireplace. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things they should do? What are some of the things they should know before they mm -hmm. ever spark that fireplace? First thing you should do is, anytime you're using your fireplace, you want to make sure, number one, your damper is open. You want to look up the chimney. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll tell you. That is, that is, that is, oh, that's a good one. We'll if get to that. Burning, yeah. right? you, yeah. you want to and make you don't sure want to stick your face open. up there when you open it either. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you want to make sure your damper is open. You want to make sure that the so flue is wait, clear. Wait, let's back up. How are you checking to make sure the dampers are, dampers open? No, you How do you know which you, way you, is open? You literally open the damper and then you look. Yeah. Right. Okay. There, there's different ways to open a Try, damper. Prime example of why you do this. About four years ago, five years ago, oh, I got some traffic. For you to watch out for I missed now. the cue music. I didn't hear it. Well, good morning. Welcome back. We were just so excited about the last uh, last talking topic. We just went straight into commercial sorry and didn't even know that. it. Yeah, I sorry about that. The, uh, bumpers. If you guys did, we didn't. Sorry. Yeah. So. Um, where do we leave off? I don't even know what the damper is. Okay. 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 You, you, you want to make the biggest safety thing you can do. All right. So right. You wanna, if you're just tuning in. <laughs> you want to make sure your time. damper's open. How you do that is open the damper, then take your light and look up and make sure that it's open. Then you want to verify that the flue is actually clear and venting and prime it at the same time. Okay, the person listening that probably right, doesn't know anything about chimneys right. has no idea what you're talking about right now. Okay. Correct. The, the damper is the... <clears throat> The part uh, that opens, right? The part that opens, and, and the, the flue is what the gas goes up and out, your actual inside of your chimney. You want to make sure that's clear of obstructions. Keep in mind that if it's cold outside, cold air sinks. It's going to be pushing down. It's calling the cause of pressure. You want to break the thermal lock where the cold air is pushing down by taking a piece of newspaper, rolling it up into a little brand, lighting it, holding it below the damper, not up in the throat of the chimney. That's how you start a chimney fire off. You want to hold it down below the damper in the firebox area. Let that burn to get a hot thermal of air going up, which will break the actual flue. And if I presume we're talking about wood burning fireplases right now. Yes, yes ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. 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 So what about my electric one that doesn't yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's but, just a flick so of a switch is there anything yeah. different you should know from yeah. wood burning to gas fireplaces like is there anything you guys work on both i'm sure yeah uh with wood burning wood burning if it's burning correctly you're going to know that you have no issues if it's not burning correctly the smoke is going to be pouring through your house you're going to know you have issues with gas gas now if gas is burning correctly you should not have to clean because gas, when it's burning correctly, you have not any flame impingement, so you don't have any yellow flame. You're not building up carbon, which is light soot that's going to float through your house. So that's but, something someone should look for if they see a yellow flame on a gas Yeah, what fireplace? happens is with your gas fireplace, anywhere the gas flame touches something, it lowers the ignition temperature, and you'll see uh, a little bit of yellow flame. At that point, you're not getting a complete 99.9% .9 burn. You're getting 
after uh, carbon left over. So if you've got a gas fireplace and you look in it and there's heavy carbon and light soot all over inside of there, there's something going on with your burner and you really should have somebody look at it. But now what most people don't realize, a lot of these older homes here in the area have gas fireplaces in the bedroom. Current fire code says that any gas fireplace in a bedroom has to be a sealed unit. So you, if you've got a bedroom and you've got gas logs that does not have a glass front on it and it's open to the room, it's a life endangerment because if you have a CO issue, if the flu gets blocked, it could actually really seriously hurt you. We actually had that in our last house. Really? Or, I mean, in, uh, our, in our house now, our last fireplace we took out. Yeah. It was, it was gas. Well, I got a question yes, about sure. that. Let's say that I like fire. I like looking at it. It's relaxing. I like the crackling sound. Mm -hmm. I don't need the heat. It's Florida. Mm -hmm. Is there something I can put on the front of the fireplace that would block the heat? but I can still enjoy the physical view of it? Okay. Here, you can put a screen uh, you, you, can, you can put a screen on. Now, what you've got to watch out for is with prefabricated fireplaces, not the masonry, but the ones that are made, they're modular, they're a UI listed appliance, you cannot put aftermarket doors on those unless they are rated for the fireplace. So if you've got a Majestic brand fireplace or an FMI brand fireplace, or a Preway brand fireplace, which Preway has been out of business since 1981. You so can't get parts. So this is like parts. the electrical right. panel only for fireplaces. Yeah. Oh, right. 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 You cannot put an aftermarket glass doors on there because you'll void the UL listing. You'll affect how the thermal siphon works on the flue cooling and venting, and you can actually cause a fire. So you, anytime you get a home, you buy a home, you change ownership, they have written into the NFP 211, National Fire Protection Agency's 211 code book, that any time a home changes ownership, a level two inspection is required to be done by a competent professional. The reason for this is what happened was the insurance agencies lobbied the industry and lobbied uh, the NFP 211, they were having a lot of chimney fires that were being reported and they were paying out exuberant claims. So they lobbied to make sure that they were inspected because they don't know if that chimney got struck by lightning by the previous owner or whether it got struck by lightning this owner. If the so they want to have a time frame for the occurrence, time of occurrence. So now anytime you buy a home, you should have a level two in inspection done because if you don't, the insurance company could actually deny the claim if there was something. Are you recommending a level yeah. two inspection? I never knew that. that yeah. yeah, that's actually yes. written in the NFP 211. I love it when you learn stuff on the show. I learned something brand new. I mean, that's something that we find out that I didn't know disclaimer that well, needs to you, be you know, a, a licensed chimney sweep. A, a, a certified <laughs> professional. That's why I asked yeah, if, if right. a, 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 there is a well, difference in level of education. Are you licensed or just certified, right? We are certified nationally. And, and there is no license in the state of Florida. Well, we do carry a business license, right. but yes, we do carry the national certification. And you know, a lot it's of a basic business license, right? It's not like a real yeah. estate agent like me. We have to have a real estate license. No, we, we, we hold a national certification. But it's a certification. Okay. Uh, give you a, the guys in our industry, CSIA, CDET, uh, CCP, CSIA, only guys that work on government buildings, the White House, State Department, uh, CSIA sweeps, period. That they're the only ones that are approved to work on government buildings. CSIA. Jimmy Safety mean? Institute of America. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There is a okay, in this in this country you have the Jimmy Safety to Institute of America. They are the education part of our industry. Then you have the NCSG, which is the National Chimney Sweeps Guild. They are the guild part of our industry that everybody, where we all, for our training, they put on the conventions. You have the CCP, the Certified Chimney Professional, which is another certification agency. You have National Fire Institute, which is another certification agency. And you guys get certified through all of them, or you pick we, one? We, NFI is West Coast. Okay. We but carry... That's, that's more for California. Yeah. Yeah. That, California's got some weird... California's, California's got their own... Yeah, yeah, going going that. That. yeah, yeah right. Their, right. their contracts are probably about yeah, 50, right. 60, 70 pages. Right. Everybody that works for our company holds a CSIA certification, they hold a CDET certification, and a CCP certification before we put them in the truck and they run the truck by themselves. That's so the CDET is the certified dryer exhaust. Speaking of that, the number one reason for house fires is dryer vents. And Most guys, people. Do you take care of those too? Yes, ma'am. We do. Okay. Mm -hmm. We do both residential and commercial. We do large 400 unit complexes, uh, both chimneys and fireplaces. We do 20 story buildings, or at least our company does. Uh, the dryer vents, 
should be clean once a year. Most people don't realize. Especially apartment buildings. Yes, yes. especially apartment buildings. We, give you an example. I'm not going to say the name of the building. But no, recently, <laughs> we, we had a building that had not been cleaned in 32 years. Oh. They had five fires in the building before they decided to clean it. When we went in and cleaned it, we found out that the system was improperly built to begin with. So from day one, it was never venting right. And literally, the system was packed solid from the inside of the dryer all the way to the roof with lint. We literally had to have APSCO come in and pull every machine in the building and clean the dryer vents before we could even clean the system. The, the back of the machines. They had to open the machines and clean everything out of the machines before we could even take care of the yeah, vents. Normally, the vents are easy to clean. You're just going to... Are you oh, well, chimney, uh, like, Do you guys build chimneys at all, or you just clean them? Or in we, the we service and repair them. Okay. I used to own a retail store and install, installing them. Uh, we specialize on difficult access and and I'm actually because we were talking about the dryer vent thing right. and we had a home inspection come up recently where the dryer vent was not like it wasn't Probably outside right. of the, attic. Yeah. the, the it was going off in the attic the, the building code is very specific when it's a, and, and I deal with this every day I actually carry the building code with me in my truck to show people yeah, look, I'm not making see. this up um, the, the building code is very specific on a couple of things first of all the dryer vent must terminate on the outside mm -hmm. of the building mm -hmm. period mm -hmm. shall shall means that it will mm -hmm. second thing is is that the duct construction once the duct goes into the wall it's required to be hard metal solid metal pipe mm -hmm. none of this flex stuff that goes in because and there's a it, gauge, you know, right? And yeah, uh, 16 gauge, I believe. But anyway, um, and I see that sometimes. I've even seen that. Right. I've seen do-it-yourselfers that have used PVC pipe, and I'm like, ah, no. What? Yes, yeah. I have. Yeah. I have seen it. But anyway, once the dryer vent goes into the wall confined of the house, into the attic, wherever crawl space, it has to be solid metal pipe. Can you mute your phone oh, already you for the tenth time? Out. I'm sorry. I it's coming through, through all the different like devices. Put your there. stuff outside. Anyway, <laughs> but anyway, but that. But that's very important as well. And and the thing is, is that if it's not properly constructed by building code, it has to be installed that way. The other thing is, is when the dryer vent goes to the roof, the hood that's on the roof cannot have a screen on it. A lot of people say, well, what about animals getting in? The vents are so small that no animals are going to be able to get in. But There's because something. we're because we're venting flammable material, you cannot have a screen on your dryer. Are, so are you and that's guys, a big uh, problem with roofers, actually. Oh, the, most roofers don't call it the roof and leave the screen on. Yeah, right. shuffle. Right. Are you installing or fixing those? Or, or we remove the screen. If it's in that instance where I said the dryer vent was vented mm -hmm. into the attic and not all the way the roof right and, okay at this point that is in the purview of a mechanical contractor okay now this all revolves around licensing you've got to know sure. the right codes and the right licensing the only person that is supposed to touch an actual pipe should be a mechanical contractor okay. according right. to building code right. okay we put them back together we repair them but if i have to put one in we have a mechanical contractor okay. pull a building permit that's the correct way to do that yeah, if it's just a matter of a, a, a tape, joint, we always let go. We can, yeah, them. we can retape them or reseal them. But as far as actually doing the installation, that's got to be a mechanical. Yeah, contractor. anytime we do anything that way, we actually bring a mechanical contractor in. They pull the permits, and so there's a. This has got to be done right. It's all about fire safety. Right. It really is. Which uh, our, our friends usually do a fire safety show close to the holidays, right? Talk a lot about the holidays. Oh yeah. Safety lights and stuff, but this ties right into that with the chimney. Absolutely. And the dryer Absolutely. vents. Really. You know, a lot of times yeah. I get it from people that. You guys uh, know by chance, real quick, what the percentages of house fires for yeah, the, chimneys uh, that are not properly. That's a like that's a great problem. question. Well, here in Florida, we don't use our chimneys like they do. In, let's say the Northeast, right. the Midwest, or anything like that. Chimney fires are a lot more prevalent up north. Down here, as a matter of fact, I know um, I know a fire chief in one of the local uh, municipalities, and I asked him one time. I said, you know, in your thirty some odd years of experience, how many chimney fires have you ever? responded to and he said you know a few here and there I said how many dryer vent fires have you <laughs> yeah. responded to he said too many to count over yeah. the years he said I lost count years ago you know, when you so pull the so. statistics up the national t t statistics say the dryer vent yeah we heard that that time so oh, we we had had to, I raised the volume all the way up this time for it 
Okay. So we're getting ready. Uh, we yeah, yeah we're, gonna, we're coming to okay. a break. Our okay. offer number, numbers. in case you have a question for our chimney sweeps that will only be here for about another 15 more minutes, is 813-377-2775. If you've got a question with regards to your dryer vent or your chimney, now is a fantastic time to call or text us, and we'll get it answered for you on air. 813-377-2775. That's our off-air number. So you can text the questions or just call in and press zero. 813-377-2775. You're listening to Tampa Home Talk, and it is officially time for us to roll to a break. We'll be back right after this moment right here on Money Talk 1010, Tampa Bay's business address. Back in a moment. Well, good morning. Welcome back. Final segment here on Tampa Home Talk. We're here with Tom and Buck uh, from Swept, Swept Away, Away and Katrina. And we got a small segment left. We spent so much time talking about history. We spent so much time talking about um, technology. We need to talk now about what you guys do today. Okay. Yeah, how can you help our person listening? Uh, there you go. That's why we're here, aren't we? <laughs> okay. Well. Other than making it really fun. Swept away our company. We've been in business for 45 years now, 35 years in the Bay Area. We specialize in doing vents, dryer vents, chimney vents, inspections. We repair. We put on caps. We stop water leaks around the chimney. Basic our whole philosophy is Can you repair, maintenance, upkeep, inspection. Right. Yes, ma'am. Our whole philosophy is keep it safe. Right. When in doubt, call us out to your house. When in doubt, check it out. When in doubt, check it out. Right. Exactly. Um, and you guys actually have a special for our listeners. So if you yes. mentioned that you heard Tampa, you heard a the chimney sweep mm -hmm. people on Tampa Home Talk. Right. Um, you can just mention our show and they'll give you ten dollars off. Yes. If you want to get a general inspection, you got something funky going on with your chimney mm -hmm. or our service. Ten dollars. Dry event. Right. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that I, I forgot to mention as well is that when we come out and do an inspection. A lot of times, the chimney actually doesn't need to be swept. Now, our company policy is that if I look up the flue and it doesn't need to be swept, I'm not going to charge you just to run a brush for the sake of running a brush. We're going to tell you that you, you're yeah. throwing your money away. Right. You know, we would rather keep you a long-term customer when you do need service or you do need a sweep, whereas, you know, maybe the first time I come out, well, it doesn't need to be swept yet, but give it another year or another two years and let's reevaluate. How often does it normally have to be swept? And is that only for... That's um, going to depend on what you burn. And the, burning? Yeah, it, de it depends on how much you use it. We, we recommend after about, what, 50 fires? 50 you should have it inspected fires. every one to three years. But 50 if you're, to 60 fires? Well, in Florida, uh, that's like... That's, that's why we say one to three years. Three years. <laughs> but now here's the thing. What people don't realize is you can mess up your fireplace in one fire. The wood has to have a certain moisture content. If that wood is too wet, you're burning green wood. It's not a complete burn. You'll actually put a glaze that's shiny and tall inside of your chimney. Crusoe, yeah. when it burns, burns at 2,500 degrees. We melt steel in the foundry at 1,500 degrees. Okay, that is super relevant because uh, it rains all the time here. Yes. People do not use a fireplace often, so right. that is right on time. And also, oh, we talked about this outside. I know the holidays are right around the corner and you've got wrapping paper from your gifts. Do not put it in your fireplace. Do not burn the Christmas tree. Do not burn the Christmas tree. No homes have burned down no. behind the Christmas tree. <laughs> People are throwing their Christmas tree in the fire. Yeah, that's how they get them. They cut them up and they burn them in the fireplace. I thought that'd be like good dead wood. Why wouldn't you do that? Now, full, of, full of creosote. Pine uh, has got yeah. the most. When you burn, the best wood to burn is going to be oak. Believe it or not, Australian pine has the lowest content. Right. But it's find, hard to find Australian pine in Florida. Yeah. Well, the, the other thing is is that if you burn paper, if you burn your Christmas tree, what it is is the rapid expansion of heat that can yeah. do a lot of damage to yeah. the flue. It can crack the flue. Yeah, you keep know, in so mind that things have a thermal I expansion. I how expensive that is if you got to fix that. So. Oh, it, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, we actually, when we, we reline chimneys, and when we reline chimneys and we restore them, we restore them with stainless steel liners that have lifetime warranties and oh, that is the standard of care in our industry right right that's correct so if you want to get a hold of these guys let me give our off-air number out before we do run out of time because we're having so much fun chatting about what you guys do it's 813-377-2775 they will hook you up 
answer questions that you guys have, uh, call or text us at 813-377-2775, and they will leave this cute little chimney sweep guy with the ladder That's on right. the fireplace uh, yep, for, good for good luck. Yep, for good luck. Absolutely. Yep. And then he'll kiss my bride. <laughs> <laughs> well, they say the ash from the chimney sweep is lucky. We usually shake our customers' hands before we leave and tell yep. them to go play the lottery. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. So has anybody ever won? Like, calls you back and says, um, <gasps> Not yet. I <laughs> wish. Hey, it was all Come on, people. Share. <laughs> people share. The result <laughs> trying right. back in the history to justify the child labor. Right. right. Oh, it's lucky. Right. It's lucky. <laughs> uh, well, the, the luck actually, um, just real briefly, comes from a story of, of one of the kings of England that was on his way to his uh, daughter's wedding. On his way across the street, there was a carriage that was out of control, and a chimney sweep happened to step out and grab him and saved his life. Life, and the chimney sweep was invited to the wedding. That's going back to the wedding thing. But mm. the king also said that this man was very lucky because he was able to save my life. You know, so, so that was just a quick okay. little, you know, another little history yeah, yeah, yeah. behind so, this. Really there is actually a, there's a lot of a lot of history. You know, and, and yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting. There's actually. one tale where the uh, bride fell from a balcony and the chimney sweep caught her in England, and the husband walked in and caught her kissing the sweep. <laughs> which you'll see a lot of pictures of a, a woman standing there with a handprint on her and the sweep. And this all goes back to that. <laughs> yeah. So what ended up happening was Two she said, well, I fell and he saved me, so he was invited to the wedding. Right. So there's a few iterations <laughs> of that. It depends on where, what country. Yeah. So it depends on the country, but it's pretty prevalent that we've been invited to weddings. We like a good time. <laughs> oh, we do like a good time. <laughs> well, you guys have so. been so much fun. Well, uh, thank we, you so much for having us. We definitely would highly encourage the person person listening who knows when the last time your chimney was really inspected because it's just not something we do a lot of because we don't burn them very often or even turn them on i mean i don't even know i really don't even turn the heat on in my house so and, and one one last thing to go with that if you live anywhere near the water you know how corrosive salt air is Good point. salt air is destroyed how does that affect the, the flute and the other stuff it, every the every chimney? every part of it uh, you know especially if this if it's the metal uh firebox and chimneys and yeah the Proof fabs really do need to be inspected every couple of years yeah. minimum because they are the ones that are the most danger because they rot out. We had one lady burning it and the flue literally caved in and dropped right in the middle of the fire box, dumped all the coals out onto the floor, caught the house on fire. And it was all because it had rusted out from water dripping in. Mm -hmm. What people don't realize is if you don't use the, the fireplace, they don't get dry, dried out. And they've mm -hmm. got an insulative wrap around them, and the insulation holds the water and causes so from the rust from the outside too. in. So it's such a good mm -hmm. point. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's been a fun hour. It uh, has been. Hey, thank you again for having us. This was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it as well. I'm glad you have too. And again, I highly encourage you to check these guys out. They will repair, clean, sweep. Check out your tire fence or your chimneys. Yep. Offer number 813-377-2775, and we'll get you guys connected. Any final thoughts? Because we're getting towards the top of the hour. Uh, well, <laughs> you've done most of the talking already. Now you're speechless. I don't know. I was trying to think of something clever to say, but uh, but anyway, but yeah, please uh, give How us. How long a have you guys been doing this? Out of curiosity, uh, I've been doing it 45 years. Buck has been I've doing been it about about eight, about oh, eight you years. Uh, well, uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, I have had the master to learn from. Speaking, right, right? right, exactly. So, well, you guys have been a blast. Well, thank uh, you. Definitely love to have it back and have you back another day mm -hmm. and uh, get you connected with some of our people and. Thanks so much for your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Right. You're listening to Tampa Home Talk, author number 813-377-2775. Again, 813-377-2775. Remember, live where you live, we're going to fix it. Welcome home. Have a great weekend, everybody. Up, up, and away.